Time now for Sid Sixero. This is where I got 60 seconds to talk. Start the clock, please. Here's what's on my mind this morning. Last season was a magical one for Scotty Barnes of the Toronto Raptors. You could barely wipe that million watt smile off his face. He excelled on both ends of the court. His energy was infectious and the rest of the NBA noticed. He was named Rookie of the Year just beating out Cleveland's Evan Mobley. What a year. What a season. But sometimes in life that smile gets turned upside down. So far, Scotty has found the going a lot tougher in year two. His field goal percentage down, three point percentage down. Defensively, he doesn't look like the same player right now. And so far, those notorious second year blues, which sometimes creep up, have crept up for Scotty. Now, to be fair to Barnes, the Raptors are fairly banged up right now, so teams are finding it easy to key in on him defensively. But the reality is, the 21 year old is no longer sneaking up on anyone in the NBA. Teams are getting ready and they're preparing. He'll find his smile again. I have faith. Give him time. Blake Murphy of the Fan Drive Time Show and uh, just the, the creator of amazing content all over Sportsnet has been kind enough to join us. Blake, I'm, uh, I'm usually one to overreact, but I'm very comfortable with the second year player finding his feet a bit more. How about you? Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, your minute there was right. It's been a tough go for Scotty Barnes. I think, you know, anyone is going to have a learning curve once you're on the scouting report, right? You catch some teams off guard last year. His scoring was way ahead of where we thought. So now teams are a little more ready. No Pascal, no Fred of late. So teams can key in on him, like you said. Um, and there's even some signs of encouragement like the fact that his assist rate is way up and has gone up since Siakam went down. So you're still seeing some of what made Scotty so exciting. Very bright days ahead, but he's going through it a little bit these last couple of weeks. Of all the statistics and, and eye test things that you're seeing, what's his biggest hurdle right now? What's the biggest thing he's learning and will pick up pretty soon? I think the biggest one that I look at as an indicator of everything that's going on is the free throw rate. And he's not getting to the free throw line at all he's down about 50 percent in terms of how often he gets to the line the free throw percentage is still solid but he's just not getting there much less than two times per game um and that's one that you know you're not always going to get the whistles but that's usually a pretty good marker of how aggressive you're being in the offense and if we want to equate aggressiveness the confidence or, or just that assuredness in taking the ball to the hole um you know, that, that's a pretty good indicator. It's also an area where the Raptors could really use him. So I'm going to be looking at the free throw totals. If he's getting to the line a little bit more, that to me will tell me that he's asserting himself on the game a little bit more the way we want to see it. And we do love in this city to focus on, does the young guy get to the line? Does the young guy get the calls? Pascal was doing a pretty good job before he got hurt. We'll see if Scotty can get uh, some respect from the whistle, as they say in the NBA. Blake Murphy from the Fan Drive Time, 5 to 7, Sportsnet 590, the Fan. If you're not following Blake on Twitter, you're not doing basketball right in this city. Appreciate you, man. Let's do it again. Great stuff. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, Sid. Blake Murphy, he's fantastic. you got to follow him on Twitter if you like basketball especially. We're going to take a break. On the other side, if you like soccer, it's a big weekend. The FIFA World Cup begins in Qatar from a sporting sense. This is huge. Messi, last World Cup, probably Ronaldo, last World Cup. Off the field, even more stories of significance. What are your thoughts? 